Hello everyone, welcome back to the Football Project YouTube channel. Today I'm back with another video and the Premier League is back tonight so it's only right that I do a Premier League predictions video to see how we do at the end of the season. Uh, obviously the transfer window is still active so my predictions are from the current day. Uh, not all the teams have made all their signings yet so I'm going to be going off their squads today. Obviously, the Premier League is starting, as I said tonight, between uh, Crystal Palace and Arsenal, which is the first game of the season. Uh, so, let's start things off. I think probably one of the easiest predictions, I think the title winner is going to be Manchester City. They've made some very good signings this year. Uh, they've obviously signed Erling Haaland. Uh, they've improved the squad. Um, they haven't lost out in many places. They've obviously lost out Raheem Sterling, which is a very, very good player for them and has been a very good player for them over the last couple of seasons. Um, but I still think they've made enough good signings with Erling Haaland, Calvin Phillips from Leeds, who, who is an incredible defensive midfielder and is going to be a great replacement for Fernandinho. They've also signed Julian Alvarez from L River Plate. Um, and I think they do have enough uh, to win the title again. Second place now, I'm going to go for Chelsea instead of Liverpool. Uh, I think Chelsea have improved the squad uh, quite a bit, and I think there are, more, there are more signings coming in. I think that's one of the main reasons why I'm putting, the, uh, I'm putting them in second. They've obviously signed Raheem Sterling, which is a fantastic signing for Chelsea. Uh, also, they signed Khalidou Koulibaly from Napoli, a very, very good centre-back. Centre and uh, two days ago, I think they signed a very good young player from Aston Villa, Carney Chakwameka. I think that's how you pronounce his name. A very good player. I've been looking at him for a couple of years now. He's very, very good. And... Um, also, Conor Gallagher is coming back from his his incredible loan last year at Crystal Palace. He's going to be at a good option. They've lost Rudiger, they've lost Christensen, and they've obviously loaned out uh, Romelu Lukaku, who wasn't very good last season anyway. I think they are going to bring in a striker by the end of the window, and I th that's why I'm putting them there. Um, so this could go a bit wrong. Uh, if they do not make the signings that I expect them to make. Third, I'm going to go for Liverpool. Now, Liverpool have improved. They've obviously signed uh, Darwin Nunes from Benfica for £75 million. That's the only major signing they've made so far. But one of the main reasons I'm, uh, I'm not putting them a second is obviously them selling Sadio Mane. I think Mane was was arguably their best player over the last couple of seasons. It's going to be a huge miss for them, and I don't know how they're going to replace him. I don't think Luis Diaz will have the end product that Sadio Mane has, and uh, I think they might struggle a bit if they don't make any new signings. Right now, with the squad that they have, I don't see them finishing above Chelsea. Now, fourth, I'm going to go with Spurs. Antonio Conte has made a few signings so far, uh, some interesting signings, I'm not 100% certain on a lot of them, but they've made a lot of signings. They've obviously signed Richarlison from Everton, uh, Bissouma for Brighton, Jed Spence from Middlesbrough, who is a very, very good right back. Uh, Ivan Perisic on a free transfer is a great signing, same with Fraser Foster as a backup uh, goalkeeper. They've obviously loaned in uh, Langley from Barcelona, which is a weird signing. Um... Langley hasn't impressed me that much uh, in Barcelona. He hasn't been very good over the last couple of seasons. And they've only sold uh, Steven Bergwijn, who wasn't that impressive in his tenure at Spurs for around 30 million euros. Uh, I see them improving. I see uh, Antonio Conte. This could be his best season with Spurs. And I think they're going to get that final Champions League spot. Now, next up... I'm going to go with Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal have looked very good in pre-season so far. They've made signings this year. Obviously, the big one is Gabriel Jesus. I think it all depends on him. It all depends on him. 
if he gets injured or falls off a bit, I can see them dropping a bit, a bit down the table. But if Gabriel Ze uh, Jesus is firing and is healthy, um, I can see Arsenal finishing above United this season again. Uh, they've obviously signed uh, Zinchenko as well from Manchester City. It's going to be interesting to see how he fares because City do play with a different style for the full-backs. I don't know how good he's going to be for Arsenal in uh, as an out-and-out left-back. I think there is a chance that he might struggle a bit. Uh, William Saliba is back after his two-year loan spells. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting to see how he fares in the Premier League. And uh, they've signed also Fabio Vieira from FC Porto for around 35 million. A player we haven't seen a lot of. Um, but I'm expecting Arsenal to finish fifth. They may they may be able to bring in a couple of more signings. We'll have to wait and see. Next up, I'm going to put United in sixth. But if the squad says, stays the same as it is today, I could easily put United around here. The squad hasn't improved one bit. They've made weird signings. Christian Eriksen on a free is okay, but doesn't improve the team. Uh, Tyler Malassia is a good left back for around 50 million, so very good signing. Uh, and Lissandro Martinez, 60 million for a centre back when you already have six centre halves and you're not going to sell either Maguire or Lindelof or no one. Is a weird one. Uh, they haven't improved at all. They've lost, obviously, lost Paul Pogba, who was one of their best midfielders. And with no improvement in, again, not signing a defensive midfielder for another year, not signing a right back when you are in dire need of a right back, the whole Cristiano Ronaldo situation. Um, right now, it's looking like Cristiano Ronaldo is going to stay, and that's one of the main reasons I'm putting them as sixth. Because I think the goals that Ronaldo is going to score in the end of the season are going to help United finish 6th. But they've not improved. There's there's no depth in the squad anywhere. Uh, one injury to your wingers and you're playing with the Langa, who's not good enough. Uh, going to start the season off without Martial and without Ronaldo. I don't know who's going to start a striker Sunday against Brighton. A lot of questions... I like what the new manager has brought in, uh, his style of play and all that, but the, he hasn't been back. The signings have not been enough. Uh, after a year of, uh, and after an awful year for United, not enough signings brought in, and it's not looking good for United this far. And uh, without more investment in the squad, uh, it could be a very, very bad season for United. Next up for the UEFA Conference League spot in 7th, I'm going to put West Ham, who have managed to keep a hold of uh, Declan Rice so far. They've obviously signed uh, a centre-forward from Sassuolo, Gianluca Scama Scamacca, for €36 million. Euros. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he does in the Premier League. I think he's going to get a few goals. Uh, they've also signed... Uh, uh, Nayef Aguad from Rennes, uh, centre half, uh, for 35 million euros. Flynn Downs, a central defensive midfielder from Swansea, for the around 10 million. And they've also made a permanent signing for goalkeeper Alfonso Areola. Uh, I was very impressed with um, uh, with West Ham last season, and I don't see why not, uh, why they can't continue going in this trajectory. Uh, next up, I am going to put Aston Villa in 8th, but uh, I'm not 100% certain on Steven Gerrard. Um, they've obviously lost Carney Chakwemeka to, to Chelsea yesterday, as I said before. They have made some signings. They've brought in Diego Carlos from Sevilla for around £31 million, which is an awesome signing, a very good centre-half. They've made the permanent signing for Felipe Coutinho for around 20 million euros. Uh, they've brought in Bubikar Kamara from Marseille on a free, which is an incredible signing. Um, 
And they haven't lost out on much. They've obviously lost Matty Target to Newcastle and Kani Chakwameka to Chelsea. So I'm going to stick them in 8th. And that's because I haven't seen much improvement in uh, in the teams nearby to them. Leicester, obviously, is one of the teams. Newcastle, Wolves, they, those are all teams that are going to be in there and about in the top 10. And uh, next up, I am going to put... Um, I'm between Newcastle or Wolves for ninth. I am going to go for Newcastle though because the investment uh, I think is going to help them. I think there's going to be a few more signings coming in in the latter part of this window. Uh, they've also signed Sven Botman from Lille. They've signed Marty Target, as I said, from Aston Villa and Nick Pope from Burnley. Some very, very good signings. And um, they haven't lost out on anyone. I think Newcastle do have a good manager in Eddie Howe. They have a good squad. They are going to prove, I think, a bit more in the squad. And I think they are in a very good position to finish in ninth this year. Next up, I'm going to put Wolves in 10th. Wolves, Wolves were a bit of a weird one last season. Bruno Lage was good. Not, not amazing, but he was good. Uh, they haven't made a f many signings. So it's basically the same team as they had last season. Um, Adama Traore is coming back from his loan spell in Barcelona. They've signed He Chang Huang on a permanent from RB Leipzig. And they've also signed Nathan Collins from Burnley. Uh, I, I am expecting a few more signings and it's going to be interesting to see if they can keep a hold of Ruben Neves for another season. Uh, but I think they're going to finish ninth. Uh, next up, I'm going to put Leicester. Uh, I'm sorry, they're going to finish 10th. I'm going to put Leicester in 11th. Now, Leicester, Leicester's transfer window so far has been a bit of a weird one. They haven't done almost no business so far. They've lost Kasper Schmeichel, which is which was one of their best players over the last couple of seasons. Obviously he was getting on in age. He's gone to Nice. Um they haven't brought anyone in. Um they might also be losing Wesley Fafana to Chelsea that was a bit rejected a few days ago by Leicester. Uh but they still have Vardy, they still have a lot of good players. I think they can still be in and around the top half, and that's why I've put them in 11th. Now, this is where it gets tough. This is where it gets very tough, because there are a lot of teams here that that could be in and around that mix, but I'm going to go for Brighton to be 12th. Brighton were very impressive last season. They have obviously lost uh, Bissouma uh, to, to Spurs. Um... They, have, they haven't made too many signings, but they were very good last season. Um, and I think they might have a bit of a drop-off, a small drop-off, uh, with also Kukureya about to sign for Chelsea. Um, so that's why I'm putting them in uh, 12th. Now, next up, a lot of teams that can put I can put here, Brentford, Palace... These are probably the two favourites to be 13th, in my opinion. And um, I'm going to go for Crystal Palace. Uh, I was very impressed with Patrick Vieira. Uh, he had a very good first year at Crystal Palace. Uh, they have a lot of good players in there. Uh, they've signed Chris Richards from Bayern Munich. They've signed Decore from uh, Lens. Uh, Sam Johnstone on a free from West Brom. And they haven't lost uh, any any players so far. So I think they are going to be in and around uh, in and around that position, in my opinion. I th I trust Patrick Vieira to get them safely and not get them uh, into any relegation battles. Uh, next up, I'm going to put Brentford. Brentford were very good last season. I was very impressed with them. Um, I think they are going to finish 14th. Uh, they've, they've signed uh, a winger from Hull. 
and Aaron Hickey from Bologna, who was a, a player that um, Arsenal were looking into as well. Uh, they've obviously signed Strakosha as well from Lazio, a very experienced uh, goalkeeper in the Serie A. And they've also signed Ben Mee from Burnley. A lot of good Premier League signings, and I think they're going to be safely in the Premier League for another season. Now, next up, I'm, be- I'm going to go for Everton, but I'm not 100% certain. I think it could be a year where Everton could be going down. Uh, losing Richarlison is going to be a big miss for them. Uh, they've signed Tarkovsky from Burnley and Dwight McNeil from Burnley as well. Uh, they've loaned in uh, Vinagri, uh, the former Wolves left back. But there's not much. There's not much there. I I don't trust Frank Lampard that much as a as a manager. I think he's gonna get sacked at some point in this season. I don't expect him to be the manager by the end of the season. Uh, they need a few more signings if they are. If they are to stay in the Premier League, but they could easily be dragged into a into a relegation battle. Uh, next up, I'm gonna go for Leeds United, finishing 16th. Leeds have made a lot of signings. They, they obviously they've lost uh, Rafinha to Barcelona and Calvin Phillips to Manchester City, which were probably their two best players over the last couple of seasons. But they've made a lot of signings. Um, they've signed uh, Aronson from uh, uh, RB Salzburg for around 32 million euros. Uh, they've signed Sinistera from Feyenoord for around 25 million. Tyler Adams, the defensive midfielder from RB Leipzig. Uh, Rasmus Christensen, uh, right back from RB Salzburg. Mark Rocker, defensive midfielder from Bayern Munich. They've made a lot of signings. But I don't know how much, how quickly they can gel together. Uh, I need to see a bit more from their manager as well. Uh, I think uh, it could be a bit of a struggle at the at the start of the season. But as the team starts to gel together, I think they could stay in the Premier League. And um, the last team that I'm going to have staying in the Premier League this season is going to be Fulham. Fulham, obviously, newly promoted side from the Championship. Um, they have made some some good signings, I have to say. They've signed Van Leno from uh, Arsenal for around 2-3 million, which is a nothing. Um, is no, a very small fee for a very experienced goalkeeper uh, in Van Leno. They've signed uh, Kevin Mbabu from Wolfsburg, who is a very good right back. Uh, they've signed Andres Pereira from United, which is... It is an interesting signing. Obviously, Andres Pereira was not very good at United, and they've obviously and they've also signed Joao Paulinha from uh, Sporting for around 20 million. Um, they've sold Anguissa to Napoli for around 15. Uh, but I do think they have enough to stay with Mitrovic in the squad. I think he's going to get at least 10, 12 goals in the Premier League this season. And uh, I think they're going to be staying in the Premier League. A team that is going to be going down in 18th, in my opinion, is Southampton. After a long tenure in the Premier League, I don't see them staying in the Premier League for another season. They haven't improved the squad. I love their manager, but there's not been enough investment in the squad. They haven't been there. Haven't been enough signings. And. Uh, they struggle a lot last season. I think this season they will not have enough to stay in the Premier League. And I think they are going down. Now next up, I'm going to go for Nottingham Forest in 19th. Nottingham Forest, first time in the Premier League in a very, very long time. They've made some good signings, I have to say. Um, but I still don't think they have enough to stay in the Premier League. They've signed... Uh, Taiwo Awonigi from Union Berlin for around 20 million. They've signed Neko Williams from Liverpool. Um, they've signed Jesse Lingard as well on a free from United. They've loaned in Dean Henderson from United. They've made a lot of signings. Uh, but I still I don't think they have enough quality in that squad um, to stay in the Premier League. And... Uh, 
I'm going to put Bournemouth in 20th. I, I was thinking of putting uh, Forest in 20th, but I'm going to put Bournemouth in 20th. Um, again, I just don't think they have enough quality in the squad to to be able to stay in the Premier League. They've signed Marcus Tavernier from uh, Middlesbrough uh, and uh, Joe Rothwell from, from uh, Blackburn, Ryan Fredericks on a free from West Ham. But this, I just don't see enough quality in this squad. And that's why I have them down in 20th. So guys, these are my predictions for this Premier League season. I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. I'd love to hear your predictions in the comments section below. Who do you think will win the league? Who's going to get Champions League football? Who's going to get Europa? Who's going to get relegated? I'd love to hear all your guys' opinions in the comments section below. And let's hope we have a good entertaining season in the Premier League. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.